At 6 o'clock that evening, Kay had finally collected enough useful information about Noelle's case, and he immediately emailed it to Ariana. She was about to have dinner with the members of Peter's family, but they all stopped to read the email first. Noelle had the kept file folder that incriminated him in his office, but he never opened it. Unfortunately, they couldn't see Noelle right now to ask him where he got the file, because he was still being detained at the police station. Only he knew who gave the file folder to him. When Ariana found out that Sean had something to do with this case, she had a feeling that he must be aware of the file folder. If Sean was the one who gave the file to Noelle, it was understandable that he didn't open it. After all, Sean was his friend, and he trusted him and respected his privacy. He never expected that he would frame him. Ariana's suspicions were correct. Kay emailed her surveillance footage that showed Sean telling someone to give the file folder to Noelle. In addition to that, Kay found evidence that Sean's wife had several houses under her name, but neither Sean nor his wife had a high enough salary to be able to afford so many houses. Plus, his wife bought her younger brother an expensive house and a car. It was highly likely that Sean and his wife had accepted bribes. Sean is a corrupt official himself, Liam exclaimed. How dare he try to frame Noelle? Isn't he afraid that he'll get in trouble? They were all angry at Sean now. Noelle was an upright official who had never broken the law. He hated bribery and corruption more than anything, and he didn't deserve to be accused of this crime. I don't think he'll get away with this, Tom said. As long as they had the evidence of Sean's involvement in the scandal, it wouldn't be difficult for them to punish him. We should teach him an unforgettable lesson. He needs to pay for what he did, Peter said with clenched teeth. He had never been angrier at anybody. His father could be put in jail because of what Sean did, but Sean was the corrupt one. Kay also sent additional evidence of Sean's dirty secrets. He had many affairs, and he had even hired different hookers with government funds. Kay sent pictures and videos of Sean with them. With that evidence, he was doomed to be thrown in jail. The Kelly family looked through the scandalous photos of Sean with different women, disgusted by what they saw. Next, they watched a surveillance video of Sean and a senior official walking together into a nightclub. Liam was greatly surprised when he saw the senior official's face. It's him, he exclaimed. Everyone turned to look at Liam. Tom asked, who is he? He's Barney Pattenkin, the deputy mayor of Washington, D.C., Liam said with a grim expression. Is there a grudge between Barney Pattenkin and your brother? Ariana asked him. Liam knew it was unlikely to remain a secret now, so he said, Well, Noelle indeed has a long-standing grudge against Barney. Barney used to be an official in Baltimore, and he never got along with Noelle. About three years ago, they competed against each other for the position of Secretary General. In order to get that position, Barney schemed against Noelle, but his scheme was exposed, so he had to drop out of the running. However, because he had powerful support behind his back, he was transferred to another city and became the deputy mayor last year. It has been years, and we thought it was water under the bridge, but I think Barney must be involved in this case. I don't believe that Sean would be able to frame Noel alone. Sean's transfer was probably a part of their scheme. Ariana nodded. She agreed with Liam. Barney must have arranged for Sean to frame Noel. This is all Barney's fault, Tom said furiously. They couldn't think of another person who could have done it. Noel had other enemies in politics, of course, because he was an upright official, and decent men in the government always had enemies. However, all the evidence they had collected pointed to Sean, and Sean was clearly working for Barney. Barney never liked Noel, so it was very likely that he was the mastermind. Kay also sent Ariana evidence of a crime that Barney had recently committed. He had hit a man with his car at this year's New Year festival, but he escaped and his chauffeur was made a scapegoat. The surveillance video was deleted from government records afterward. Kay was able to find out about it because he scrutinized all the surveillance footage of Barney outside of his government office. On several occasions as he left work, a couple approached him and began arguing with him, but Barney always brushed them away and ignored them. After a while, the couple stopped appearing in the surveillance footage, but it attracted Kay's attention. He was very smart, and he sensed the couple's deep hatred towards Barney, Therefore, he investigated the couple, and it turned out that Barney's chauffeur was the couple's son. Their son was made a scapegoat and put in jail, and they had never forgiven Barney for it. Barney, of course, wouldn't allow them to damage his career by exposing the truth, so he hired a bunch of people to beat them up. 
the couple was scared and didn't dare to cause him trouble anymore. Although the surveillance video of the actual accident was deleted, Kay still found the videos before and after the accident happened. It was clear in the videos that Barney was alone in the car that day. He also had evidence to prove that Barney's chauffeur wasn't with him. He had found footage of Barney telling his chauffeur to take the night off. Then he went to meet Sean in a clubhouse. Peter was furious when he saw all of the evidence. Barney should spend the rest of his life in jail, he yelled. The others were also mad, but they were grateful they had learned the truth. Please, unseat Barney and punish him severely. I'm begging you, Peter said to Ariana. If Barney's scheme succeeded, Noel could be sentenced to over 10 years in jail. Plus, that might not be the worst result, because anything could happen when Noel was behind bars. I'd be happy to do that, Ariana said. Since Ariana agreed to help them, she would fulfill her promise. Moreover, Barney was an evil person, so she had no qualms about interfering in this scandal. Kay also found out that Barney's wife and his brother-in-law had many houses under their names. His brother-in-law only had a small business, so it was impossible that he could afford to buy so many houses. It was very obvious that those houses were bribes as well. However, Kay didn't have enough evidence to prove it, so we couldn't be sure of it. Still, that wasn't a big problem, because there was other important evidence to prove that Barney was guilty. For instance, there was surveillance footage of Barney at a business dinner. After dinner, he walked out with a 12-inch black suitcase, which he had gotten from another man. Barney drove back home, and when he arrived, instead of getting out of his car and walking into his house at once, he opened the suitcase in his car. Inside the suitcase were tons of bundles of cash. With that clue, Kay began to investigate the man who gave Barney the black suitcase and his connection with this case. It turned out the man was the owner of a real estate company, and he bribed Barney to get a piece of land from the local government. Since Kay had the evidence from the surveillance cameras, it wouldn't be hard to find more evidence that Barney was dirty. Once his crimes were exposed, people from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection would conduct an official investigation on him as well, and he was sure to be put in jail. This is great evidence. I think Barney has messed with the wrong person this time, Peter said with satisfaction. However, Liam looked worried. Seeing his expression, Ariana asked, Is there something wrong? I'm just worried there might be a more powerful figure that Barney is working for. Three years ago, when he was let off the hook, even though his scheme was exposed, someone helped him out. I just don't know who it is, Liam said. Hearing that, the others also felt concerned. Ariana instead simply smiled and said with confidence, You don't need to be worried. If you trust me, I promise that I can make sure Barney gets thrown in jail and nobody will dare to defend him. No matter how powerful the figure behind him is, there is severe evidence against him and he's doomed to be severely punished according to the law. I don't think his supporter will want to be connected to this trouble. Liam looked a little less worried, but he still had doubts. Ariana continued, Here's another thing I need to tell you. Lee Connors, the captain of the Public Security Bureau in Los Angeles, was put in jail last week. My people helped me collect evidence about his crimes, too. Do you know Captain Connors' family background? He's a member of one of the most famous families in the country, but even that was useless against all the evidence we collected against him. I'm not showing off because all the evidence was collected by one of my employees. I alone wasn't able to unseat Captain Connors but I simply provided his political enemies with clear evidence of his crimes. I can do something like that again. All in all, you don't need to be worried. Everything will be fine. The Kelly family was shocked when they heard about Ariana helping to unseat Captain Connors, but she was right. No one would dare to defend Barney in the face of solid evidence against him, unless he or she wanted to be in trouble as well. The powerful figure behind Barney's back surely wasn't an idiot. Peter's eyes lit up with admiration, and he said, Wow, you're so amazing. He respected Ariana more than ever now. Ariana smiled and said nothing. There are too many corrupt officials out there, and I wish they could all be put in jail, Peter said. He knew that it was impossible, however. Ariana replied, We may not be able to stop every corrupt official, but we can behave ourselves. Whenever you need my help in the future, Please tell me, and I'll spare no effort to help you, as long as it's legal. She cherished Peter, Clara, and her other close friends, and she was always happy to help them without asking for anything in return. Peter felt touched, and tears welled up in his eyes. 
Thanks to Ariana, his father would be able to get out of this big mess. Although his father was still detained for now, he believed that he would be released sooner or later. If they relied on the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection to discover the truth and gather enough evidence, it might take a very long time. But luckily, Ariana also had the criminal evidence of his father's political enemies, so they would be punished. Peter was cheered up upon thinking about that. The other members of his family were also touched by Ariana's words. Ariana interrupted them before they could all start crying. All right, it's getting late now, so I think we should enjoy our dinner, she said. The others didn't realize that Ariana was still hungry until she said that. Right, we should eat. The food's probably cold by now, Mrs. Kelly said. They were so worried about Noel's safety just then that they forgot to eat. But since they were confident that he would be fine now, they regained their appetites. While Ariana was having dinner with the Kelly family, Peter's other good friends learned about what had happened to his father. They asked Peter and Ariana about the current situation in their WeChat group. They knew that if anyone could solve the problem, Ariana could, but they were still concerned because Peter was their good friend. Peter didn't see their messages until he finished dinner. He told them that everything was fine with Ariana's help and his father was innocent, but he didn't tell them more details because the case was still ongoing. Even if he wanted to share more information with them, he had to wait until it was settled. After reading Peter's reply, his friends were relieved. Ariana left Peter's home after dinner, and she said that she would come to visit them tomorrow morning. He offered to drive her home, but she declined, so he didn't insist. Shortly after Ariana left, Tom's sister, Siobhan, and her husband came. Because they weren't in the city today, they weren't able to come right away when they heard about what happened to Noelle. How's Noelle doing now? Siobhan asked with concern as soon as she arrived. Relax, your uncle is fine, and we're confident he'll be released in a few days, Liam said. The man who schemed against him will be put in jail instead. Siobhan's face lit up at once. Really? Siobhan's husband asked, who schemed against him? One of your uncle's friends named Sean Maycomb. He was transferred here from Philadelphia to be the deputy director of the National Railway Administration not long ago. Get this, he's working for Barney Pattenkin, Liam said. What? Barney Pattenkin? Both Siobhan and her husband were surprised. They were aware of the long-standing grudge between Noel and Barney, so they soon realized that this was a scheme of revenge. Well, Barney will soon get what he deserves, Siobhan said with disdain. Everyone knew that Barney had tried to scheme against Noel once three years ago, but they didn't have clear evidence back then, so we got away with it. This time, however, was different. Liam stared at Siobhan. He remembered what she had done to Ariana before and felt guilty because Ariana was very tolerant. Do you think that our family alone or the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection was able to find out who the mastermind was within such a short time? He asked. Siobhan sensed something unusual in Liam's tone. Uh, no, she replied. Of course not. No one in our family has the ability to investigate schemes like this, and it would have taken a very long time for the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection to discover the truth and collect enough evidence, Liam said. Then who found out who was behind this scheme? Siobhan asked with curiosity. Ariana, Tom said. What? Siobhan was shocked. Ariana Young, she confirmed. Although she had a conflict with Ariana in the past, she gradually discovered that she was a very outstanding young woman and gave up her bias against her. However, they didn't get along in the past, so she felt a little strange when she talked about her right now. Still, she had greatly helped her family, so Siobhan felt grateful to her. When Ariana got home, she greeted Selena's family before doing anything else. Although Selena was already aware of Ariana's SAT score because she had called her to ask her about it, she hadn't congratulated her in person yet. The moment she saw her niece, she jumped up in excitement. She kept complimenting her and even cried tears of joy. Selena regarded Ariana as her daughter, so she felt proud of her when she saw her succeed. That afternoon, the Education Bureau released the good news that Ariana got the highest SAT score in the country this year. A male student who got second place also had a very high total score of 1589 points, and he came from the number one high school in Los Angeles. His name was Ricky Gong. A girl got the third highest score, which was 1572 points. There were only about a dozen students whose total score was above 1550. 
That was a very small percentage of the hundreds of students across the country that took the SAT. It was a difficult test, however, so a lot of students didn't even pass. Ricky Gong thought that he would have the highest score in the country because 1589 was very impressive. To his astonishment, there was a girl who had an even higher score than him, which was hard for him to accept. At first, he was surprised, but then he became jealous and full of hatred. He vowed to himself to get revenge on the girl who was better than him if he ever met her in the future. He was selfish and unkind, and he couldn't tolerate it when someone else got what he wanted. The female student who was in third place, on the contrary, didn't show any hatred at all. Instead, she had respect for Ariana. She would love to make friends with her if it was possible. Some people were jealous of those who were better than them, while some preferred to learn from those who were more outstanding than them. When she was back in her room, Ariana called Corey Drinkwater, who had recently been promoted to be the governor of Pennsylvania. She had evidence against Sean and Barney, but she still needed a person of power to deal with this case personally. Governor Drinkwater had the authority. As long as he agreed to be involved, nobody would dare to stop him. It was 9 o'clock p.m., and Governor was watching TV with his wife at home. His two daughters were away at college, so he lived alone with his wife. He had heard the good news about Ariana's SAT score, and he sent her a message to congratulate her earlier that day. He had a deep fondness for Ariana, and Mrs. Drinkwater also liked her very much. When Governor Drinkwater received Ariana's call, he was slightly surprised and answered it at once. Hi, Ariana, he said. Hi, do you have some time to talk right now? Ariana politely asked. Governor Drinkwater understood it must be regarding something important. Yeah, what's up, he said. Ariana cut straight to the chase. Are you on good terms with Barney Pattenkin? She asked. Governor Drinkwater frowned because he disliked Barney and he knew that he wasn't a good man. He was worried that Ariana might have made a deal with him. No, I'm not. He and I don't see eye to eye. Why do you ask, he said. Great. Ariana relaxed. Although she would be determined to punish Barney, even if Governor Drinkwater supported him, she felt better when she heard a negative answer. She continued, Well, the thing is that my friend's father, Noel Kelly, the general secretary in Baltimore, was just framed by Barney. He was accused of accepting bribes and was taken away by the people from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. My friend asked me for help, and I found criminal evidence against Barney and a man named Sean Makeup, but it hasn't been exposed yet. Because Barney is a man of power, I'm afraid the government in Baltimore can't successfully arrest him. I want to report Sean and Barney to you. Please help us deal with this case. Ariana was aware that Governor Drinkwater was a moral, upright official, so he wouldn't disregard what she told him. In addition, he still owed her a big favor, so she believed that he would help her out. Otherwise, she wouldn't have turned to him for help. However, although she knew that Governor Drinkwater wouldn't refuse, she was still very polite. She needed his help after all, and it would be rude if she took it for granted. What? Governor Drinkwater asked in surprise. Did you say that you have collected clear evidence of Barney's and Sean's crimes? Normally, senior officials hid their dirty secrets very well from other people. Even the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection couldn't uncover evidence so easily, but Ariana did it in a very short time. He knew that she wasn't an ordinary young woman, but her unbelievable ability still impressed him. Mrs. Drinkwater immediately turned to look at her husband with great surprise. She had been listening to his conversation, and she couldn't believe what she was hearing. Yes, I have the evidence in my hands right now, Ariana replied. Since you already have evidence against them, I must do something, Governor Drinkwater said. Although normally the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection would handle it, he was willing to deal with it personally for Ariana. She had saved his life after all, so he couldn't refuse when she needed his help. In addition, this would benefit him because Barney was one of his enemies in politics. Thanks, Governor Drinkwater, Ariana said. My pleasure. I should be thanking you instead, he replied. Ariana then sent the evidence to him in an email. When Governor Drinkwater hung up the call with Ariana, his wife asked him about what happened. He told her everything she didn't hear, and she couldn't believe how mature and capable Ariana was for a 19-year-old. After that, Governor Drinkwater went to his study to read the email Ariana sent to him. When he read it, he was shocked and angry. He was shocked because the evidence Ariana collected was very persuasive, and her ability impressed him once more. 
He was angry at Barney and Sean because of what they had done. Even though he already knew that they weren't good people, he was still surprised by their illegal deeds. Because it was getting late, he decided to deal with the matter tomorrow. However, he didn't sleep well that night. Barney and Sean had no idea about what would happen to them yet. They still thought they would get away with what they had done. Their plan didn't go exactly as they hoped today, but they had another plan, which they would put into action tomorrow. At about 10 o'clock p.m., Henry called Ariana. Hey, love, what are you doing? He asked when she answered her phone. I'm missing you, Ariana said, which was true, but she was also printing the criminal evidence in her room. Hearing that, Henry smiled. I miss you too, he replied. They had only been apart from each other for a few days, but he already missed her very much. I'll be in Baltimore for another two days before I fly back to L.A., Ariana said. Do you need to deal with something in Baltimore? Henry asked. Yeah, I do, Ariana replied, then told Henry what had happened to Noel. I found enough evidence, and Governor Drinkwater agreed to help, so I believe it won't be a problem, but I need to stay in Baltimore to see what will happen next. Makes sense, Henry said, and continued. By the way, how's our mother doing? What? Ariana was confused for a second, then realized that he was talking about Rita. She laughed. We're not married yet, she said, feeling a little shy. I love you enough that we might as well be. You're my girl for life, Henry said. Ariana smiled and teased him. Well, if you ever treat me badly, I'll leave you. I won't give you a chance, Henry replied. He promised to treat her as well as he could. Ariana beamed with happiness. There was nobody who would cherish her as Henry would. They chatted with each other for about an hour before they went to bed. The next day, Ariana visited Peter's family after going on her morning run and eating breakfast. Peter and his mother were up very early, and they waited for Ariana's arrival together. Liam and Tom also came over at 8 o'clock a.m. They cared about Noelle, so they wanted to be there to hear about the next steps in the case. Siobhan and her husband arrived at 8.30 a.m. When Ariana showed up at 9 o'clock a.m., all the members of the Kelly family were present. Siobhan felt a little uneasy when Ariana arrived, but Ariana already forgave her for what she had done before. She essentially considered Siobhan a stranger. Ariana, have you had breakfast? Mrs. Kelly politely asked. Yes, I have, Ariana said. Have you heard any news from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection? She asked. It's only been a day, so we haven't heard anything yet. If they were as efficient as you, those corrupt officials would be caught already, Liam said. He wasn't mad, but simply frustrated at the lack of government efficiency. I already reported this case to Governor Drinkwater of Pennsylvania, and he agreed to help us. All we need to do now is to wait, and Mr. Kelly will be released soon, Ariana said. Everyone was excited when they heard that. Ariana, are you Governor Drinkwater's friend? Mrs. Kelly asked with surprise. She knew that Ariana had powerful connections, but she was still shocked when she said that Governor Drinkwater was willing to help her. She was just a teenager, after all, and not many teenagers were friends with governors. Yeah, there is a story between us, Ariana replied, but she didn't say anything more about it. At 9.30 a.m., shortly after Barney arrived at his office, People from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection came for him. He was struck dumb when he saw them. As a senior official, he knew who they were. What are you? Barney started to say. He didn't understand why they suddenly broke into his office. Barney Pattenkin, you've been accused of bribery and corruption, and you also had another man arrested for a car accident that you caused. You're under investigation now, said one of the members of the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. What? Barney panicked because he had indeed done all of those things, but he knew he couldn't let them know that. Therefore, he calmed himself down and protested. It's slander, slander. However, no one believed his words, because they already had evidence of his crimes. Whether the evidence was enough to put him in jail or not depends on the judge that handled his court case. Barney knew that he couldn't resist arrest, but he didn't want to be taken away. He had to turn to the man who supported him for help. Excuse me, my stomach is a little uncomfortable, and I need to use the restroom for a minute, he said. Be quick. The staff member knew what Barney wanted to do, but he didn't mind, because he couldn't get away with what he had done. There was solid evidence of his crimes, and Governor Drinkwater had given the order to deal with it seriously. 
The second Barney walked into the restroom, he locked the door and took out his phone to dial a number. What? A calm male voice sounded on the other end of the line. I, I've been reported by someone, and people from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection are in my office now. Help me, Barney said, his voice trembling in fear. The man on the other line was surprised as well. What? You were reported? Do you know who did it? He asked. No idea, Barney said. But whoever it was, I want to kill them, he snapped. What were you accused of? The man asked again. Bribery, corruption, and that hit and run that I blamed on my chauffeur, Barney said. The man on the other line became silent. After waiting for a few seconds, Barney got anxious and said, Secretary, go with them, but don't admit to what you've done, the man said. Okay, okay, Barney said. He trusted the man very much, so he obeyed his orders. He had no idea that Governor Drinkwater had taken over this case now. With the evidence Ariana had collected, Barney was certain to go to jail, but they still needed to learn more details. So Governor Drinkwater also sent out a group of people to complete the investigation. Barney left the restroom then and went with the people from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. On his way out, his co-workers looked at him with faint excitement. It wasn't a secret that he was a corrupt official after all. The man who Barney just called thought about what he should do next. Then, he called his friend in the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection and asked him about the case. There were dishonest officials in every organization, and some members of the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection were corrupt too. The man's friend was one of them. His friend told the man that Barney was taken away because Governor Drinkwater already had solid evidence against him, and his friend persuaded him not to defend Barney anymore. He was surprised and curious about who reported Barney to Governor Drinkwater, but with that being the case, he had to stay out of it. Barney didn't know that he had already been abandoned by his supporter, so he insisted on denying all the accusations against him. However, Dwight Keith, the staffer who questioned him, only faced him with a mocking smile. Barney, do you really think you're innocent? He asked. What do you mean? Barney asked nervously. As long as he had enough support from influential people, he would be fine, even if he was really guilty. However, if the evidence against him was severe enough, he would be doomed to be put in jail and nobody could help him out. He refused to believe that would happen, however, because it wasn't easy for ordinary people to find solid evidence. Unfortunately, Ariana and Kay weren't ordinary people. Dwight chuckled. Do you know who reported you? He said. Who? Barney asked. He somehow had a feeling that the person who reported him wasn't an ordinary person. To be honest, I don't know, but whoever it was directly reported you to Governor Drinkwater, and then he reported you to the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, along with clear evidence against you, Dwight said. What? Barney was shocked. If Governor Drinkwater was going to deal with this case personally, he would be in big trouble. Still, he didn't want to believe it was true. Show me the evidence, he demanded. No problem, Dwight said. He needed to show Barney the evidence as a part of his job, so he agreed. After that, another staffer came in and showed them all the evidence that Ariana had collected. First, the hit-and-run crime, said Dwight. You said that it was your chauffeur who hit the man, but your chauffeur had already left for the night, and you hit the man yourself. Although the surveillance cameras at the accident scene are broken, we still can see that you were driving the car before and after the car accident happened, he added. Barney felt hopeless. Facing the surveillance footage, it was impossible for him to deny it. You made your chauffeur a scapegoat for the crime you committed. Not long after that, your chauffeur's parents were attacked by thugs and seriously injured. We'll soon know whether those thugs were sent by you, Dwight continued. Barney felt terrified. Dwight pointed at the scene from the surveillance footage where Barney was checking the money in his car. Deputy Mayor Pattenkin, as an official, where does the money come from in your home? Since your family doesn't have a business, he asked. Barney didn't know what to say. He hadn't known the surveillance camera outside his home caught him counting the money in that briefcase. How about the houses under your wife's name? Dwight added. How can your family afford so many expensive houses? Although he asked the question, he knew the truth. The money was undoubtedly a bribe. Barney opened his mouth, but Dwight interrupted him. Don't tell me that your brother-in-law sent them as gifts to you. Your brother-in-law doesn't have that kind of money. Those houses are worth dozens of millions of dollars. Barney had to close his mouth. Dwight then continued to show the evidence of the scheme against Noel. 
Sean Maycomb has a close relationship with you, and he was transferred to Baltimore because of your recommendation. However, shortly after he arrived there, he schemed against Noelle Kelly, the General Secretary of Baltimore, and accused him of accepting bribes. Although there is no direct evidence to show that you were also involved in it, we'll soon find out the truth, Dwight stated. Barney suddenly realized that the accusations against him might have something to do with Noel. That's why he was arrested right after Noel was. However, he didn't understand how Noel was able to find out that he was involved. Maybe Noel knew someone who was much more powerful. Maybe that was the person who reported it to Governor Drinkwater. Dwight stared at Barney. Deputy Mayor Pattenkin, what do you have to say for yourself? Barney remained silent. He didn't want to admit that he was guilty, but he didn't know how to deny it. Still, even if he didn't confess, it was impossible for him to get away with his crimes. There was too much evidence against him. In Baltimore, people from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection arrested Sean for scheming against Noel. He was worried, but not too concerned, because he believed that he still had support from another powerful figure. In addition, he had already made arrangements to blame someone else for his crime. A staff member of the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection asked Sean the same questions that he asked him before, and Sean once more denied that he had given the file folder to Noel. Sean, if this file folder has nothing to do with you, how do you explain this? The staffer turned the computer to face him. On the screen, a video was playing, and it showed that Sean handed the file to a man. Sean gasped and stuttered, I, I, there was no house transfer contract or check in the file folder when I gave it to that man. That man must have replaced what was inside. Didn't you claim that you'd never seen that file before in your life in our previous interview? The staffer asked. I, Sean stiffened in shock and realized that he had said something he shouldn't have said. It was quite clear in the surveillance video that he had indeed given the file folder to Noel by using a middleman. If he had admitted that in the first place, he might have been safe for the time being. As long as the man took the blame, Sean could get away with it. Unfortunately, he made a mistake. Besides, there was other evidence to prove his crimes. Sean, do you admit scheming against Noel Kelly? The staffer asked again. Sean still refused to admit it, so the staffer showed him other evidence of his crimes. He had taken houses as bribes and even paid for hookers with the government's money. Sean rounded his eyes in shock because all his dirty secrets were exposed now. So, do you want to admit to your crimes now? Don't think Barney will help you, because he's in big trouble himself. Governor Drinkwater is dealing with this case personally, so nobody will step forward to defend you, the staffer said. Finally, Sean lost hope. If Governor Drinkwater was handling this case, no one would help him. Are you going to admit to your crimes or not? The staffer asked again. I, I admit to them, Sean said. If he admitted to the crimes on his own, he might get a lighter punishment. Since Sean admitted to his crimes, Noel was proven innocent and was released that morning. However, although he was released from police custody, the case wasn't settled yet, so he needed to stay at home for a while. He couldn't go back to work until it was completely over. Once Noel was free, he called his wife and told her that he had been released. Mrs. Kelly burst into tears of excitement when she heard her husband's voice. Peter asked his father whether he needed him to pick him up, but Noel said no. All they needed to do now was to wait until Noel was home, and they would celebrate his release with a family lunch. Ariana told them that Noel would be released that morning if all went according to plan, so they had already prepared a lot of food. At this time, the female members of the Kelly family were busy cooking, while Ariana, who was a guest, was sitting in the living room chatting with Liam. Noel called Maxwell Winger, too, because he stood up for him when he was arrested. Maxwell was relieved to hear that he had been released. The moment Noel showed up at his home, his family welcomed him with smiles and hugs. Luckily, he was still in good condition, even though he had been detained at the police station for the past few days. His family was relieved to see that he was fine. Noel, you should thank Ariana. Without her help, you might have been kept at the police station for years, Liam said. Hearing that, Noel was surprised because he didn't know that Ariana was the one who had found the evidence against Sean and Barney. He thought that the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection had discovered the truth, and he was impressed by their unusual efficiency. It turned out that they weren't the ones that had helped him. It was Ariana.
In order to show his sincerity, Noel got on his knees to thank Ariana. Thank you, Miss Young. Thank you so much for what you've done for me and my family, he said. You don't need to do that, Mr. Kelly, Ariana said, helping him get up again. After that, they continued to talk with each other in the living room. Ariana finally had the chance to tell Noel about everything that happened after he was taken away by the police. She told him that they found a box in his safe with several gold bars, an ownership certificate for a house in Peter's name, a key, and a check for $200,000 inside. When she told him that, she took out the box from her backpack, really from her telepathic eye space, and gave it to him. Liam didn't know about the box until now, but he didn't blame Ariana for keeping it a secret from him. Noel, however, was furious when he saw the familiar box. He regarded Sean as someone he could trust, but he betrayed him. At the same time, he felt sad because he lost someone he always considered a true friend. He had to accept that he had no real friends in politics anymore. Besides that, Sean was also guilty of bribery, corruption, and other dirty crimes. Noel realized that he had the wrong opinion about Sean for a long time. Then, Ariana explained Barney's role in the scheme. Barney had a long-standing grudge against Noel, so he wasn't surprised that he tried to unseat him, but he was indeed astonished by the method that he used. However, what had already happened couldn't be changed, and Noel just felt lucky that he had Ariana's help to get out of the mess. Barney is doomed to be put in jail, and the powerful man supporting him won't dare to help him out anymore, Ariana said in the end. Well, they asked for it themselves, Noel said. Although there are still many corrupt officials in our country, not every one of them is harmful. Some still do good things for the people, so the administration turns a blind eye on them, but sometimes they still need a warning. He was clearly aware of the unspoken rules in politics. Ariana understood those rules as well, but Peter was fed up with corruption. He suddenly wanted to abandon his dream of going into politics. Miss Young, I need to thank you again for your help. Noel repeatedly thanked Ariana. He felt like nothing he said was enough. It was my pleasure to help. You're my close friend's father, so I was happy to do what I could, Ariana said. She left a very good impression on the Kelly family. Noel wanted to thank her with something concrete, but he didn't know what he should give her. She was a very successful businesswoman after all, so it would be meaningless if he gave her money. He decided to talk about it with his family after she was gone. Soon after that, lunch was ready, and they enjoyed it together. During the meal, every member of the Kelly family proposed a toast to Ariana. One by one, they went around the table and thanked her. She told them not to be so polite, but they insisted on it. When it was Siobhan's turn, she took a long breath in. She seemed nervous, but she still stood up and said to Ariana, Miss Young, I want to apologize for what I said and did to you before. I was stupid back then. I know that you're very kind and tolerant, and you probably don't mind it at all, but I still need to make an apology. I'm sorry. Ariana indeed didn't care about what Siobhan had done in the past, so she was willing to accept her apology. I accept your apology, and please don't blame yourself anymore. Let's let bygones be bygones, she said. Thank you, Miss Young, Siobhan said with a relieved smile. Oh, I should thank you again for saving my uncle, too, she added. Ariana raised her glass and clinked against Siobhan's glass, then took a sip of wine. After lunch, they gathered in the living room again. Peter shared the good news with Clara and his other friends in case they were still worried about him. Once they heard that Peter's father was fine, they felt happy for him, but they still wanted to get together with Ariana one more time before she left Baltimore. She agreed to hang out with them later that day because she needed to leave Baltimore the next day. She left the Kelly family's house soon after that, and she planned to take a nap at home before she went to meet her friends that afternoon. She believed that Governor Drinkwater would handle the case well, so there was no need for her to be involved any longer. Tom offered to drive Ariana home, but she said that she could take a taxi herself. On her way back home, she saw a group of people gathered outside a shopping mall. It aroused her curiosity, so she used her jade eyes to see what they were looking at. She saw a woman squatting in the middle of the crowd, and two naughty kids were throwing garbage at her. The woman was terrified and sobbing. Ariana recognized the woman immediately. It was her Aunt Lily. She frowned. What was Lily doing here alone? Although Ariana never got along with her, she was mentally ill now, and she didn't want to see her being bullied in public. Therefore, she told the taxi driver to stop the car. She paid him the fee and got out. She ran towards the center of the crowd, 
and snapped at the two naughty kids. Stop it now! The kids were scared by her angry tone, and they both burst into tears. What are you doing? You scared my kids! A woman shouted at Ariana angrily. Ariana turned to look at her and said coldly, Your kids are throwing trash at this woman, and instead of stopping them, you let them do it? The woman felt a little embarrassed, but didn't think that it was a big deal. So what? They're just kids, and they won't hurt her. Other people standing nearby voiced their opinions. Right, it's not like the kids are strong enough to hurt her. But should we teach the kids that they can bully others if they want? Kids should be educated to behave themselves too. Ariana said, You're a mother with bad manners. It's no wonder your kids are so rude. If you don't think their behavior is unacceptable, should I do the same thing to you? How can you say that? It's none of your business what my kids are doing, the woman responded furiously. Your kids are throwing garbage at my aunt, so it is my business to stop them. To be honest with you, my aunt is mentally ill, but that doesn't mean that you can bully her, Ariana said. She didn't mind admitting her relationship to Lily. Well, the woman didn't know what to say. Right at that moment, one of the kids was about to throw a marble at Lily. Ariana noticed it, and she pushed the kid's mother forward to protect Lily from being hit. The next second, the marble ball hit the woman's eyes, and she cried out in pain. How do you feel now? Do you still think it's not a big deal? You were hit by your son, Ariana mocked. Other people all laughed at the woman. You... The woman was ablaze with fury. How dare you push me to protect her, she yelled. How dare your son to throw trash at my aunt, Ariana yelled back. My kids didn't hurt you, the woman responded. She didn't think that Ariana should have gotten involved because her kids only hurt Lily. Fine, go ahead and let your kids continue to act that way, but they'll end up in jail, Ariana said. She hated seeing kids bullying others, but the parents of kids who allowed that kind of behavior were even more hateful. Kids weren't inherently mean, they were simply spoiled by their parents. In other words, naughty kids needed to learn a lesson to behave themselves. How dare you say that about my kids, the woman said, pointing a finger at Ariana threateningly. With a loud sound, Ariana slapped her hand away. Don't point your finger at me, she snapped. The woman went crazy and wanted to slap Ariana. You're mean, she screamed. However, when she took a step forward, Ariana caught her hand so that she wasn't able to escape at all. Let me go! Let me go! The woman screamed. Other people were shocked by Ariana's strength. The two kids burst into tears when they saw that their mother was caught by a stranger. Mom! Mom! They cried. Ariana warned the woman, If you ever cause trouble again, I'll call the police. After that, she let the woman go. If the woman didn't have two kids, Ariana wouldn't have let her go so easily. The woman was terrified by Ariana's strength, so she had to listen to her. Even though she refused to admit she was wrong, she still took her kids and left in a hurry. People in the crowd continued talking about them when they were gone. That woman was so rude. Where are her manners? Her kids were as rude as she was. I think her kids might break the law in the future if she doesn't teach them to behave. Right, if kids are used to causing trouble when they are young, they might commit serious crimes when they grow older. I agree. Ariana relaxed after seeing that Lily was fine. She didn't have Oliver's phone number, so she called Selena and told her that she found Lily outside the shopping mall. Selena came immediately, and on her way, she gave Oliver a call. When she arrived at the shopping mall, she told Ariana, I called Oliver and told him what happened. He said that Lily's nurse took her eyes off of her for just a few minutes, and that's when she ran away from home. They're out searching for her right now, and they were about to call the police, Selena told Ariana. Before long, Oliver and the nurse arrived at the mall too. The nurse blamed herself for letting Lily get away from her, but Oliver didn't criticize her because Lily was mentally ill and behaved like a child. In addition, the nurse took good care of her and didn't treat her badly. It was just a one-time mistake. Thanks to the help of the nurse, Lily didn't shout or damage things anymore, but she was still very ill. Usually, she remained silent all day long. Ariana could cure her, but she didn't want to, because if she recovered, she would remember the terrible attack she had been through, which might completely ruin her life. For now, she was at least alive and treated well. Oliver thanked Ariana the second he arrived, because Selena told him that it was she who found Lily. Ariana, thank you, he said. His eyes were filled with tears of gratitude, because she had helped him a lot. 
It was nothing, Ariana replied with a smile. She didn't know that Oliver was thanking her, not only because she had helped them find Lily, but also because she had helped him settle an important business deal. Thanks to her, his company had gone back to normal now, and it even made more money than before. More and more people learned that he was Ariana's uncle, so they were willing to do business with him. Oliver didn't brag about his relationship with Ariana himself, because he still felt guilty for what he had done to her family. Still, the news spread within a very short time. Ariana didn't mind that Oliver's business improved because of her. As long as he didn't use her influence to commit any crimes, she wouldn't stop him from making more money. I heard that you got the highest SAT score in the country this year. Congratulations, Oliver said. Thanks, Ariana replied politely. After that, Oliver brought Lily home. He treated her like a child now, but even though she was mentally ill, he didn't abandon her. When Ariana finally arrived home after dealing with Lily, it was 3 o'clock p.m. After taking a nap, she booked a ticket to fly back to Los Angeles the next morning. She needed to go there because Zed and Naomi's wedding was only three days away. At 5 o'clock, Ariana took a taxi to meet her friends at a restaurant. When she passed the office for Sherman Real Estate, she thought for a while, then told the driver to stop the car. She knew that Rachel would still be at work and wanted to see her so they could head to the restaurant together. Although Sherman Real Estate was her company, she seldom went there, so the staff members didn't recognize her. However, she had a business card showing that she was one of the directors of the business, so nobody dared to stop her. The staff didn't know that there were only two directors for Sherman Real Estate, Ariana and Alan Fisher. They saw Ariana's director card, but they weren't aware that she was the actual owner of the company. When Ariana went to the finance department and saw Rachel, she noticed that she didn't look well, her face was pale, and she seemed to be in pain. However, before she could walk over to her, a staff member stopped her and said, Who are you? This is the finance department, and outsiders are not allowed to come inside. The staff member was just doing her job, so Ariana wasn't annoyed. She showed her the director's card at once, and the staff member was astonished and apologized. Sorry, Miss Young, I didn't know it was you. It wasn't surprising that the staff member hadn't had the chance to meet the senior management of Sherman Real Estate. Nevertheless, she was very surprised that they had such a young director in their company. No worries, Ariana said. She waved her off and walked to Rachel. Other staff members were surprised too, and they all stood up and greeted her respectfully as she passed them. Nice to see you, Miss Young, someone said. Rachel's ears perked up, and she looked up in surprise. Ariana, what are you doing here, she said. Her colleagues were shocked. It was obvious that Rachel was very close to Miss Young. Rachel, are you all right? You don't look well, Ariana said with concern. Rachel lowered her voice. Oh, it's my time of the month, and I'm having really bad cramps, she said with a grimace. Why don't you ask to leave early and rest at home? Go buy some medicine for yourself, Ariana said, and she took out a power crystal for Rachel to take. Rachel took it without hesitation and felt much better in seconds. She was too shy to ask to leave early, and she would get off work in half an hour, so she decided to wait until then. Go buy smart health medicine for your cramps later. You can take it whenever you have menstrual cramps again, Ariana informed. Although there were no smart health stores in Baltimore, the smart health brand medicine was on the shelves of many big pharmacies in the city. I will, Rachel replied. Other female staff members who overheard their conversation mentally took note of what Ariana said and they decided to buy Smart Health Medicine for their menstrual cramps too. They subconsciously believed that the medicine recommended by Ariana was very effective. Within a minute, Rachel's pain went away, and she regained the color in her face. You can rest for a bit, and I'll have a tour outside. We can go together to meet the others when you're done, Ariana said to Rachel. Sure, she replied, and Ariana left. Once she was gone, the staff in the finance department all surrounded Rachel and asked about their relationship. She hesitated for a while, then told them that she and Ariana were classmates, and both of them had just graduated this year. Nobody believed that a high school student was able to become a director for Sherman Real Estate on her own, so they all believed that Ariana's family must be very rich. They also asked Rachel if Ariana was a good student. When she told them that Ariana got the highest SAT score in the country this year, Everyone was shocked. In case they didn't believe it, Rachel told them to check it on the internet. Several people ran to search for the news at once. 
When they searched for Ariana's name, however, they learned even more shocking information about her online. She wasn't only the top scorer on the SAT this year, but she also had billions of dollars in wealth from companies that she started herself, and she was only 19. They had heard of some of her companies before, but they hadn't paid much attention to them. Now it turned out that the owner of those companies was a 19-year-old girl. She was also director of their company, too. OMG, a female staffer exclaimed in shock. Right at that moment, the finance manager walked inside. What are you doing? It's work time, so you shouldn't waste time gossiping, he said to them. You should look at this, a staff member said, waving his hand towards the finance manager. Their finance manager was a very kind man, and they got along well. What's wrong, he asked, walking over at once. The staff member pointed at the screen of his computer. Read the news yourself. After reading the news, the finance manager was shocked too. I thought that she was just a director of our company, but it turns out that she has many other companies under her name, another staffer said excitedly. What? She's a director of our company? The finance manager rounded his eyes in shock. Other junior staffers might not know it, but he knew that there were only two directors in Sherman Real Estate. That meant that Ariana was the chairwoman of Sherman Real Estate. He wouldn't believe it if someone told him that earlier on. But now, after seeing that Ariana had many other successful companies under her name, he had to believe it. However, he was still amazed by it, because Ariana was so young. Rachel was also surprised when she heard their discussion, and she suddenly understood why Ariana arranged for her to have an internship at Sherman Real Estate. However, she still didn't know that Ariana was the owner of the company. Well, she was just here, a staffer suddenly said. Where is she right now? The finance manager asked. No idea. She said that she would take a tour outside, and... The staffer turned to point at Rachel. She's Rachel's classmate, and they'll be leaving together later. They were all jealous of Rachel now. If Ariana was her friend, she could have had a lot of helpful support from her. They also realized that it was Ariana's arrangement that allowed Rachel to work as an intern in their company in the first place. The finance manager stared at Rachel with surprise. He had assumed that Rachel was the daughter of Alan's friend, but it turned out that she was Ariana's friend. Rachel felt a little uneasy when so many people were looking at her. Is Ariana a director of Sherman Real Estate? The finance manager asked Rachel. I, I don't know. I just found out from their discussion, Rachel said honestly. The finance manager looked confused. How do we know she's a director here? He asked. Oh, I just stopped her when she walked inside, and she showed me her director card, a staff member explained. The finance manager was now very sure that Ariana was the chairwoman of Sherman Real Estate. That meant their boss was a young woman. All right, go back to your work now, the finance manager ordered, then walked back to his own office to digest this piece of shocking news. Meanwhile, Ariana went to Alan's office, and they talked about business until 5.30, when Rachel got off of work. The finance manager thought that Ariana would come back to the finance department, but she didn't. She called Rachel and told her that she would wait for her at the door. Rachel walked outside, and they left together. Thanks to the power crystal Ariana gave her, she felt well enough to join the fun with her friends that night. As they were driving to the restaurant, Rachel suddenly asked, Ariana, are you a director of Sherman Real Estate? Ariana smiled. She decided to tell her the truth. Yeah, but if you want to be specific, I'm the owner, she said. What? Rachel was shocked. Does that mean you're the one that helped Andrew's family? She asked. Yes, it was me, Ariana answered. Rachel took a long breath in. Am I the only one who knows about this? She asked. She was wondering about Clara and their other friends. Yeah, I think so. I don't know whether Andrew is aware of it or not, Ariana said. Rachel's eyes lit up with excitement. Then she looked worried. Is it a secret? She asked. She was afraid she might accidentally blurt it out in front of them. It's fine. I just didn't tell them because nobody brought it up, Ariana said. So I can tell them, right? Rachel said. Yeah, Ariana smiled. Great, I'll tell them later to surprise them, Rachel said excitedly. Ariana was amused by her reaction, but she wouldn't stop her. When they arrived at the restaurant, the others were already there. The second they walked into the private room, Rachel said, Everyone, I just found out a secret about Ariana. Do you want to know what it is? What is it? Tell us. The others were curious and urged Rachel to tell them. Ariana is, Rachel said, then deliberately paused for dramatic emphasis. Say it, Clara urged her. 
Tell us now, Peter said. Rachel felt satisfied and said, Ariana is the owner of Sherman Real Estate. The others were shocked. What? Really? Although they knew that Ariana was very accomplished and that she had many other companies they didn't know about, they were still surprised when they heard that she owned Sherman Real Estate. It wasn't a secret that the company had a new owner, but they were greatly surprised that it was Ariana who bought it. Rachel laughed when she saw their shocked faces. Ariana, is this true? Harry asked Ariana. Yes, it's true, she replied. Why didn't you tell us? Clara complained. You know we're familiar with Sherman Real Estate, Anya said. The others echoed their frustrations, although they weren't really angry. All right, I know it's my fault, so I'll pay the bill tonight, Ariana said. Normally, they shared the bill, unless it was a meaningful meal and someone wanted to pay the bill on his or her own. Of course, you should. You can't keep it a secret from us. Ariana's friends jokingly gave her a hard time. They were close friends after all, and there was no need for them to be too polite toward each other. In fact, no one was more shocked than Andrew. He couldn't believe his ears when Ariana admitted she had bought Sherman real estate. That meant that she had done his family a very important favor without him knowing it. Ariana noticed Andrew's reaction and expression. Andrew, are you upset with me for keeping it a secret from you all this time? She asked. She cared about his feelings, and that was why she asked that question. The truth was, she saved his family by buying Sherman real estate from his father, and he should be grateful to her. However, Andrew and Ariana were close friends, but when she suddenly became his father's boss, he felt very strange. No, of course I'm not upset. I should thank you for helping my family out. Without your help, I honestly don't know what would have happened to me and my father, Andrew said. He regarded Ariana as one of his best friends, so he didn't hide his real feelings from her. Although he wasn't talkative, he got along well with his friends, and he would do anything for them. For example, when Rachel's family was in trouble not long ago, he also stepped in to do what he could to help her family. I hope you don't feel too weird about it, Ariana said. I'm your father's boss, not yours, and we're still close friends. You know me very well, and you don't need to keep a distance from me, she added. She didn't want there to be awkwardness between her and Andrew. Her other friends agreed. Clara chimed in, saying, Right, Andrew, you don't need to worry about it. We're close friends, no matter who we are. They all comforted Andrew and persuaded him to cheer up, then continued to enjoy the meal together. Only when Ariana was with this group of friends, she felt like she was a teenager. Most of the time, she felt older. After dinner, instead of going to a bar, they went to an arcade and played some games. Since school was out, they were free all day long, so they played games a lot lately. They all enjoyed playing Battle in the Sky, but they couldn't reach a very high level. Harry and Clara were the best among them, while the others were at a lower level. It was taking time for them to get familiar with the new game. Hey, Ariana, how long have you played this game? Your level is much higher than ours, Harry said. I've played it three times, I think, Ariana said. Although it wasn't easy to reach a high level in that game, she was much better than other players, so she spent very little time on the game. Wow, that's incredible, but I'm not surprised, Harry said with a shrug. Ariana was always much better at everything than anyone else they knew. I want to reach as high a level as Ariana so I can team up with her, Clara said decisively and took out her phone. Me too, Harry said. I'm in, Peter joined them. Harry, Peter, Lynn, Clara, and Andrew began to play the game together. While they did that, Michael, Rachel, Anya, and Ariana went to play sick bow. Usually, when they played sick bow, the losers would have to take a drink of beer as a punishment, which made the game more fun. However, because they decided not to drink alcohol tonight, the losers of each round took a sip of tea. Ariana didn't use her jade eyes when she played with her friends and depended on her luck to win. However, even when she simply relied on her luck, it was hard for her to lose. Rachel, on the contrary, lost many times and had to drink a lot of tea. She felt a little uncomfortable when she drank too much, so Michael offered to take the punishment for her. It happened many times, so eventually Ariana asked, "'Don't you want to tell us why you're helping Rachel out so much?' She and Anya stared at Michael and Rachel. They had noticed a difference in their relationship, especially since Michael was acting so concerned about her. It seemed like they had a secret fling going on. However, if they didn't want to admit it aloud, Ariana wouldn't force them to. Michael and Rachel were taken aback for a moment 
and she flushed a little. Michael looked over at her, then admitted, Um, we're boyfriend and girlfriend now. Both Ariana and Anya let out a cheer, although they weren't surprised. After offering her congratulations, Ariana said, Well, I hope you guys are very happy together. I know it's not my business to get involved, but I hope that you won't betray each other. As their friend and the leader in the group, Ariana had a great influence on them. She cared about both of them and didn't want them to hurt each other. Even if they broke up one day in the future, she hoped that they could remain friends. That wouldn't happen, however, if one of them betrayed the other. I know it's hard and unrealistic to commit right now because nobody knows what will happen in the future, but I can promise that I sincerely care for Rachel and I would never betray her or do anything to hurt her, Michael said. Ariana knew that Michael was a good guy, but it was hard to predict how people would act in relationships. After all, it was easy to fall in love, but much harder to maintain love. However, since nobody knew what would happen in the future, it was most important to just enjoy their life right now. I second what Michael said. It's too soon to say what will happen between us in the future. But for now, we just want to treat each other well, Rachel then said. She was a smart girl who understood what she wanted and what she was doing. After that, they continued playing and Michael put his arm around Rachel, not caring who saw now that their secret was out. Clara and the others were absorbed in playing Battle in the Sky, so they didn't hear their conversation. Anya lost a round of sick bow and she put on a pouty face. Ariana hardly ever loses and Rachel has Michael's help, but I have to drink my tea when I lose, she said with a sigh. You need to find someone to drink it for you as well, Ariana joked. Anya laughed. I'm still looking for that someone, she joked back. They left the arcade at 11 o'clock p.m. because it would be closing in an hour. The arcade was located next to a popular bar, so many drunk people were wobbling along the street. In order to find a clear space to hail a taxi, Ariana and her friends walked to the end of the street. However, as they were walking, they suddenly heard a piercing scream from above. A woman was falling from a 15-story building, plummeting towards the ground, where Ariana and her friends stood. If they couldn't jump out of the way in the few seconds they had, the woman would fall straight onto them and seriously injure them. Luckily, except for Anya, the others all had been trained by Ariana, so they quickly moved out of the way. Clara pulled Anya out of the way at the last second, but Ariana stood still. Clara and the others weren't worried about her because they knew that she must have a plan to save the woman. Onlookers, on the other hand, thought that Ariana was too shocked to move, and they all screamed, thinking that she was about to be crushed. To everyone's surprise, just as the woman was about to land on her, Ariana reached out her arms and caught her. With the help of her magical power, her hands were unusually strong, and her arms were protected from the force of the falling woman. However, the woman fell from a very high place, so it still hurt Ariana a little bit. The scene shocked everyone around them. Nobody could believe that a young woman was able to catch the falling woman. The woman didn't know what happened, she had thought that she was going to die, so she tightly closed her eyes in despair. Clara and the others were also astonished. They knew that Ariana was unbelievable, but they didn't know that she would catch the woman. Hey, are you all right? Ariana asked the woman in her arms. When she heard Ariana's voice, the woman's eyes snapped open. She stared at Ariana in stunned silence. Ariana gently put the woman on the ground, and she burst into frightened tears. She just jumped down from such a high place and thought that she was going to die, but she survived. However, she didn't know whether that was a good thing or not. Ariana knew that she was terrified, so she patiently let her cry and tried to comfort her. After crying for a while, the woman knelt in front of Ariana and begged her, "'Please help me. I must leave here and go back home. I don't want to be sold to the East Side Gang.' What? Ariana was concerned. What are you talking about? She questioned. Through her tears, the woman explained that she came to Baltimore to meet her boyfriend, whom she had met online, but she received a nasty surprise. He planned to sell her to a member of the East Side Gang, who would keep her as his mistress to pay off his debt. She was unwilling to comply, so to escape from him, she chose to jump off the balcony of the tall building. She was heartbroken and couldn't understand why her boyfriend tricked her like that. When everyone heard her story, they were furious. What? How could he do that to you? I'll beat him up, Clara said angrily. Harry was also mad. What kind of man does that? He should be taught a lesson, Michael said. He loved his girlfriend deeply, and he couldn't imagine a man treating his girlfriend so badly. 
The woman was still trembling in fear. I, I'm scared of those men from the East Side Gang, she stammered. She was grateful for what Ariana had done, but she didn't want her to be hurt because of her. It's fine, they can't hurt us, Ariana said to comfort the woman. Given her and Claire's relationship with the East Side Gang, none of its members were willing to act against them. After that, they helped the woman get up and escorted her into the building. She was still terrified and trembling, but she was grateful to have people helping her now. This building was a hotel, and the receptionist was concerned when she saw an injured woman being escorted inside by a group of teenagers, so she called her manager at once. She had no idea what had happened earlier. The woman told Ariana and her friends that she was staying on the top floor, so they took an elevator there. When the elevator doors opened, the woman's boyfriend was standing there. He was about to go downstairs to find her, but unexpectedly she returned by herself. Helen, you scared me. Are you all right? The man said to the woman. He was angry at her because she almost ruined his plans, but he had to pretend to care about her in front of other people. Although he was shocked that Helen survived jumping off the balcony, all he could think about was how he could use her to pay his debt to the East Side gang. Helen shook with fear and hid behind Ariana. Relax, we can protect you, Ariana said soothingly. She walked out of the elevator with her friends. Harry and the other boys wanted to beat the man up the moment they saw him, but it wasn't the right time. They needed to wait for a while longer to learn more about the truth. Do you plan to force Helen to be a gang member's mistress? To pay off your debts to him? Ariana directly asked the man. He was struck dumb for a second, then realized that Helen had told them everything, and he glared at her. Since it wasn't a secret now, the man didn't bother to hide his true intention because Ariana and her friends were simply a bunch of teenagers. However, he didn't realize that Ariana wasn't an ordinary person. Therefore, he said, Helen should be flattered that Dudley has taken a liking to her. She can live a good life after becoming his mistress. What's wrong with that? Before he could say anything else, Clara punched him in the jaw and said angrily, Ridiculous. You don't have the right to sell a woman to another man. The man's jaw ached with pain, and he felt fury burning inside of him. He shouted, What's your problem? This has nothing to do with you. The next second, Harry stepped forward and punched him too. Damn it, don't you know it's illegal? He said. The man was furious, but Peter and Lynn joined the fight before he could struggle. He was only an ordinary man, so he couldn't fight back against several strong young men. After the boys had beaten him enough that he was moaning and kneeling on the floor, Ariana stopped them. All right, let's go to the room now, she said. After Ariana told them to stop, Harry and Peter pulled the man to his feet and dragged him to the front door of the room. Helen had told them the room number when they went upstairs. Ariana knocked on the door and Dudley came to open it. He had been waiting inside the room with his henchmen and he thought that Helen's boyfriend had brought her back, so he was astonished to see Ariana's and Clara's faces. Miss Young, Miss Porter, he greeted them nervously. Almost every member of the East Side Gang in Baltimore was familiar with Ariana's and Clara's faces. Dudley was a junior leader in the gang, so he recognized them at first glance. Both Helen and her boyfriend were shocked when they saw Dudley's attitude towards Ariana and Clara. At the same time, Helen felt relieved. Since Dudley showed respect towards them, it meant that they must be influential people and they could protect her. Her boyfriend, on the other hand, was scared. Ariana stepped forward and looked at Dudley with narrowed eyes, then said, This man told us that he was going to sell Helen to you to be her mistress, but she has no interest in being used to pay off his debts. What should we do about that? She spoke with confidence and authority. Miss Young, the thing is that he owes me a lot of money, and he offered to trade his girlfriend to me to pay me back. I didn't force him to do that. Since Helen doesn't want that, I have no problem calling off the deal, Dudley said. Helen was a beautiful girl, and when Dudley saw her photo, he thought he would love to make her his mistress. Since Helen's boyfriend cared more about getting out of debt than he did about Helen, he immediately offered to sell her to Dudley to pay off his debts. Helen, however, refused to be a part of the terrible transaction. Rather than be subjected to Dudley, she jumped from the balcony, desperate to escape. This man is the one who owes you money, not Helen. She is innocent and she shouldn't have to pay for his debts. Ariana coldly said. I understand. It's all my fault, and I shouldn't have agreed to the deal. Dudley apologized hurriedly. 
If I hadn't caught Helen and saved her, she could have lost her life because of you. Shouldn't you compensate her for it? Ariana said. It was clear that Dudley was not a good person, but he had a penitent attitude toward Ariana, so she was willing to give him a chance to make up for what he had done. Beating Dudley up wouldn't help Helen as much as getting him to pay her compensation. Oh, right, right, of course. I should compensate Helen, Dudley said. He understood Ariana's meaning at once. He took out $30,000 in cash and handed it to her. I only have $30,000 with me right now. If you think that's not enough, I can withdraw some later. Dudley hated to part with so much cash, but he was more afraid of making Ariana angry. When Helen saw the money, her jaw dropped. She wanted to say something, but she was too shocked for words to come out. That was a lot of money for her. Great, Ariana said. She took it and didn't ask for more money. Dudley felt relieved. All right, Helen will leave with me, and you can deal with this man yourself. I don't want to see him hurt Helen again, Ariana said, glancing at Dudley. Dudley nodded and watched Ariana walking out with her friends. After walking forward for a few steps, Helen suddenly remembered that her handbag was still in the room. Oh, my handbag, she said. I'll get it for you. Dudley ran to pick up Helen's handbag and gave it to her. Ariana then put the $30,000 inside. Helen didn't think that she should take the money. She started to say, Miss Young, I... But Ariana interrupted her. Take it. You deserve it. She almost lost her life, and $30,000 was fair compensation for the trauma she had been through. Ariana was quite persuasive, so Helen thanked her and took the money. The receptionist witnessed everything in the surveillance cameras before the owner of the hotel arrived. Although the man was beaten heavily by Dudley's men after Ariana and the others left, he was still alive. No one in the hotel dared to stop them because they looked very aggressive. Ariana told Helen that she should either stay in a good hotel for the night or she should fly back home. Helen didn't want to stay in Baltimore for a second longer, so she decided to go back home. She didn't care about what would happen to her ex-boyfriend. She repeatedly thanked them before she left because without their help, she might have already lost her life. When Helen was gone, Ariana and her friends also left. After a short while, Dudley also left the hotel, bringing his men and Helen's ex-boyfriend with him. The owner of the hotel came later, but no one was left at the scene, and his hotel wasn't damaged, so he didn't bother to call the police. It was midnight when Ariana finally got home. Henry didn't call her tonight, so she thought that he must be busy. He was indeed very busy at this time. At that moment, he and three other members of the Red Flame had just arrived at a cave in a distant mountain. They were going to catch a thief who stole a night luminescent pearl from the National Museum. A few days ago, a night luminescent pearl arrived at the National Museum. It was presented on display today, but was stolen at 7 o'clock p.m. Two staffers were also seriously injured when the thief stole it. Gerald had been at the museum when the pearl was stolen. Because he had a day off from his military duties, he went back to L.A. to see the exhibit at the museum, along with Master Jordan, Master Ortiz, and Master Kent. The museum not only had the night luminescent pearl on display that day, but also many other valuable objects that had been stored in the warehouse for a long time. It was a special exhibit. When they were about to leave, they heard alarm bells ringing, and an announcement came on that the night luminescent pearl had been stolen. Gerald rushed into action to chase the thief. However, the thief escaped very fast, making it impossible for Gerald to catch up to him, which made him think that the man could be a member of the evil practice that Ariana had told him about. Gerald called Henry to come help, and he also enlisted the help of their teammates, Glenn and Carl. They checked the museum's surveillance cameras, but they couldn't tell from the surveillance footage if the man was a mortal or a member of the evil practice. The differences between humans and immortals were subtle, and only those who were familiar with members of the evil practice could easily identify one. The man took a taxi, heading west after he left the museum. There were surveillance cameras along the route he took, so they tracked him down using the cameras. He ended up stopping in front of a small village, 30 miles west of LA, then seemingly disappeared into thin air. The village was surrounded by miles of mountains and desert. Even though the chances of finding the man were low, Henry and his teammates still decided to try. What made Henry feel strange was the fact that he somehow could sense a bit of faint magical power, and he followed its traces. He didn't think too much about it. 
He assumed that he was probably able to sense it because he had taken a lot of the power crystals that Ariana gave him. As a result, Henry guided his teammates to the place where he felt drawn to the outside of a cave, which was far from the small village. This area was even more isolated than Black Hawk Mountain. Henry didn't tell his teammates that he could sense magical power, but he was sure that the man who stole the night luminescent pearl was a member of the evil practice. In the cave, the man from the evil practice couldn't wait to extract the power from the night luminescent pearl. Immortals could harness power from magical objects in a process called cultivation. The man had to focus during the whole process, however. If anyone approached within 15 feet of him, he could sense their presence, but he couldn't stop the cultivation right away or he might be hurt. Henry and his teammates didn't know what was happening in the cave, so they had to go inside to check it out. Without hesitation, they walked into it. It was very dark, and they needed some light, but they didn't want to let the man know they were coming, so they turned on a single dim flashlight. They walked ahead for about 20 yards before they saw the light of the night luminescent pearl in front of them. They continued to walk ahead quietly and turned off the flashlight. As they moved forward, the light of the night luminescent pearl became brighter. This pearl was smaller and dimmer than Ariana's, meaning that it had a less magical power, but it was still something that immortals wanted to get their hands on. Because a night luminescent pearl could absorb the essence of the sun and the moon as its own, an immortal could gain endless magical power through it. The man from the evil practice sensed Henry and the others coming when they were about 15 feet away. He straightened up and became alert. He had to stop practicing his cultivation, even though the ongoing magical power might hurt him. The moment he stopped, the night luminescent pearl fell to the ground as well. His cultivation was forcibly interrupted, so the magical power circulating within him was suddenly blocked with no way to exit his body. It bubbled up within him until he spat out a mouthful of blood. He frowned and cast his eyes about in the darkness. Whoever interrupted his cultivation, the man was determined to kill them. Henry and his teammates stepped forward into the glow of the night luminescent pearl, and they met the man's eyes. Henry and Gerald were very sure that the man was a member of the evil practice when they saw him, but Carl and Glenn thought he was a normal man. They didn't know about the evil practice, and they didn't believe in ghosts and monsters. The man glared at them with strong hatred in his eyes. Damn you stupid mortals, how dare you interrupt my cultivation, the man shouted, and he rushed forward to attack them. Even though he was injured, he had strong powers, it was hard for the others to fight against him. They didn't understand why the man called them mortals, nor did they understand what he meant about cultivation, but they had to focus on the fight for now. Carl and Glenn were shocked that the man was able to fight against the four of them at the same time. He was unbelievably strong. During this time, Henry suddenly felt an uncomfortable sensation in his abdomen, and he found it hard to control his body. He had that feeling often these days, and he was running out of the power crystals Ariana gave him. Because of the uncomfortable feeling, Henry became much weaker than usual, and the man got the chance to hit him badly. He was pushed backward forcefully and knocked his back against the wall, then fell to the ground. The man was much stronger than them, so Henry was seriously injured from the blow. Boss! Gerald cried out. He and the others didn't understand what was happening. They sensed that something was very unusual because Henry was the strongest member of their team. However, even he was no match for the man. They realized that it was impossible for them to win the fight today. I'm fine, don't worry about me, Henry shouted at them, not wanting them to be distracted because of him. Gerald and the others continued fighting against the man. They didn't know that Henry was running out of the magical pills, so they thought that he would be fine within a few minutes. The three of them continued fighting against the man for several more minutes. They had to be very careful because if the man got the chance to hit them, they would be badly injured. All of a sudden, the man saw an opening and punched Carl forcefully in the jaw. Although the man was also injured, the blow was still very heavy, and Carl fell to the ground, feeling like his jaw broke. Luckily, he had magical pills with him too, because Henry had shared some with him. He took out a pill and was about to take it. Unfortunately, once he opened the porcelain bottle, the man sensed the strong magical power emanating from the pill. He was shocked by it, and he greedily rushed forward to snatch the magical pill away. 
Although the Power Crystal wasn't as powerful as the Night Luminescent Pearl, it was very useful. Members of the Evil Practice wouldn't miss anything that could give them additional power. Luckily, Gerald and Glenn noticed what he was doing and grabbed him at once. With great effort, they held him back for long enough that Carl could take the pill. Because Carl was seriously injured, it would take time for his wound to fully heal, but he still got back to his feet and joined in the fight again. Once Henry felt better, he tried to stand up. All of a sudden, he touched the light luminescent pearl and felt something cold flowing into his body. It was the same sensation he felt when Ariana was putting her magical power into his body. He frowned in surprise, not knowing what was happening. Before Henry could figure it out, the man gasped and said, How could you absorb the magical power? He had stopped fighting against Gerald and the others, and his eyes were rounded in shock. He had sensed the magical power flowing into Henry's body. However, Henry was immortal, and immortal couldn't absorb magical power. The others didn't understand what the man was talking about, and they hadn't sensed Henry do anything strange. They were mortals, so they naturally couldn't see anything. Henry was greatly surprised too. As the magical power flowed into his body, he felt that his body changed. The man was anxious when he saw that Henry absorbed the magical power from the night luminescent pearl. He ignored the others and turned to attack Henry. He needed to get the pearl back as soon as possible. Gerald, Carl, and Glenn were all injured, so they weren't able to stop the man now. All they could do was call out, Henry, to warn him. They wanted to help him at any cost, because he had saved them many times during dangerous missions they performed in the past. To their astonishment, Henry regained a lot of strength within a few seconds, and he quickly jumped up to fight against the man. The night luminescent pearl was clenched in his hand, its light escaping through the gaps between his fingers. Gerald and the others breathed a sigh of relief when they saw that Henry was all right. They seized the chance, and each of them took a pill to help them recover. They soon felt much better, but their wounds couldn't heal right away. Even though they wanted to stand up to help Henry, they had to rest for a while. At first, it wasn't easy for Henry to fight against the man. Several times, he had to retreat, but he gradually became stronger and stronger with the help of the night luminescent pearl. As time went by, he became equally as strong as the man. The man sensed the change in Henry's strength, and he became even angrier. Who are you? How can you absorb the magical power so fast? He shouted. Henry absorbed magical power at a fast speed and took no time to transform it into strength, which the man had never seen before. I can't tell you, Henry coldly said. Whoever you are, you are doomed to die today, the man threatened, then attacked Henry with even greater force. However, Henry was becoming increasingly strong as well, so he was still able to fight against the man. Besides, with how quickly he was growing in strength, it seemed that he would be stronger than the man in minutes. The man couldn't believe his eyes, because Henry was only a mortal. Gerald and the others were relieved when they saw that it wasn't difficult for Henry to deal with the man anymore, but they didn't understand how it was possible. Still, the man wasn't weak, so both he and Henry were sustaining injuries in the fierce fight. Suddenly, the man hit Henry's stomach, which made him double over in pain. His stomach shrank, then seemed to swell with power. The man was pushed away by the force, and he hit the wall of the cavern before he collapsed to the ground. This scene shocked everyone, and they turned to stare at Henry in great surprise. Even Henry couldn't believe it. This strange situation happened again, but he still couldn't figure out why. The man glared at Henry and said, You! You! He was immortal, but he was able to use the magical power that only immortals knew how to use. However, Henry looked surprised too, so it was obvious that he didn't understand why it happened. The man knew that he had to escape now, or he might lose his life. So without hesitation, he grabbed Gerald, who was the closest to him, and held him hostage. Because Gerald was injured, and still in shock from what just happened, he couldn't defend himself from the man. Gerald! The others cried. They were scared, but didn't dare to move right away, because the man might hurt him. Give me the night luminescent pearl, or I'll kill him, the man threatened. Fine, I can give it to you, but you must let him go, Henry said. Although he didn't know whether the man would keep his promise, he couldn't put Gerald's life in danger just because of a night luminescent pearl. The man held Gerald while moving sideways toward the exit. No problem, give me the pearl and he'll go free. 
As long as he could get the night luminescent pearl back, he was willing to give up fighting against these men. He could take revenge after he had made a full recovery. On the count of three, you throw the night luminescent pearl over and I'll let him go, the man said. Fine, Henry replied. One, two, three. The man counted to three and Henry threw the night luminescent pearl to him as they agreed. The man let Gerald go and dove forward to catch the pearl that was flying through the air. Gerald rolled aside at once, in case the man held him hostage again. Right at that moment, Henry dashed ahead, pointed his gun at the man, and pulled the trigger. The man felt the danger, but he wasn't able to move as fast as usual because of his injuries, and the bullet accurately hit his hand, causing him to miss the night luminescent pearl. When he tried to catch it with his other hand, Henry shot him again, and he had to avoid the bullet, so the pearl fell to the ground. The man was furious. How dare you! Henry was charging toward him, and he had to make a decision at that moment. It was a hard decision, but the man decided to give up the night luminescent pearl, and he escaped into the night. Henry didn't chase him, because his teammates were still injured, and he couldn't leave them behind. Luckily, the night luminescent pearl was left here. Henry picked it up. He still felt that the magical power was flowing into his body once he touched it, but there was only a little left. Although Gerald and the others were injured, they all had taken a power crystal, so they would be fine after resting for a while. Henry was out of power crystals now, but he felt much better with the help of the magical power from the night luminescent pearl. Henry, who was that man? He looked very strange, Carl said. And why was he suddenly pushed away from you earlier? He asked curiously. Glenn was also confused about it. Gerald, however, remained silent because Ariana had told him to keep what he knew a secret. I don't know either, Henry said. Please, don't tell other people until I figure it out. If you encounter anyone like him again in the future, don't fight with him and tell me about it right away, he added. Actually, he needed to ask Ariana to figure it out. They weren't strong enough to defeat members of the evil practice on their own. His teammates nodded. Since their boss told them to keep it secret from other people, they would listen to him. Gerald also nodded, not wanting his teammates to realize that he knew more than they did. I need to do some research about this night luminescent pearl. If anyone asks you about it, just tell them that we didn't find it, Henry said. He needed to figure out their reason why he could absorb the night luminescent pearl's magical power. All right, they agreed. After they had rested for a few more minutes, they left the cave and went back to the village. The next morning, Ariana flew back to Los Angeles. When her plane landed, she turned on her phone and saw a missed call from Abigail, so she called her back at once. Hi, boss. Abigail greeted her excitedly. Do you have any good news to tell me? Ariana asked her. Yes. Remember when I told you that I was participating in the clothing design competition in Paris? I made the top ten. I ranked eight. Although it isn't very high, it's not easy for a new competitor to place in the top ten in an international competition. Plus, it means my design will be shown at the Paris Fashion Week, Abigail said. Her greatest wish was that more and more people would see her designs so that she could make a living doing what she loved. Her life completely changed ever since she met Ariana. Abigail continued, Boss, my mentor told me that a lot of famous clothing brands will want to sign a contract with me once I become popular, but I promise I won't sign any contracts with them. My designs belong to Charm, so I'll introduce myself as the clothing designer of Charm when I do interviews. That's wonderful. I appreciate that, Ariana said. She was very satisfied with Abigail's attitude. After the call with Abigail, she walked into the arrival section of the airport and noticed a familiar face among the crowd. It was Paige Hutton, whom she hadn't seen for a long time. Paige didn't see Ariana, but Ariana wanted to say hello, so she walked toward her. Oh, hi Ariana, what a coincidence, Paige said when she saw her walking towards her. Hi Paige, did you come here to pick someone up? Ariana asked, even though it was quite obvious that she had. Yeah, I just came back from Europe, and Sal has some time off from his job, so he's coming to LA to see me. We decided to meet each other at the airport, but his flight was delayed for half an hour, Paige said. When they were chatting with each other, some people recognized Ariana and started talking about her. Oh, isn't that goddess Ariana? It is, OMG! Did you hear she got the highest SAT score in the country this year? Ariana was more famous than Paige now. 
Paige was only famous in the modeling and fashion industry, so people who didn't pay much attention to fashion weren't familiar with her face. However, she still attracted a lot of attention when she was talking to Ariana. Who's the woman talking with goddess Ariana? She's gorgeous too. Yeah, and she looks a little familiar. Is she an actress? Oh, I think she's a model. I saw her face in a magazine. Many girls who were Ariana's fans took out their phones to take photos of her. However, they were standing quite far away, so the photos weren't very clear. Ariana noticed the people talking about them, but didn't mind it. After she and Paige caught up for a while, she said, Well, I won't bother you any longer. Have fun with Sal. It was good to catch up with you. Bye, Paige said with a smile. After that, Ariana walked away. Once she was gone, the girls that had recognized her posted their photos on social media and attracted a lot of envy. Some people also recognized Paige as a famous fashion model. After a year of working, she gained a lot of fame in the fashion industry, after all. Not long after that, Sal's flight arrived, and Paige left with him. Ariana took a taxi straight to the Flores family's house after she left the airport. It was about a 45-minute drive, and she hadn't slept much the night before, so she fell asleep on the way there. The taxi driver was a man about 30 years old. He didn't recognize Ariana, but thought that she was beautiful and kept glancing at her in the rearview mirror. When he noticed that she was taking a nap, an evil idea formed in his mind. When they reached an exit, the taxi driver left the freeway and drove to an isolated place. Ariana was sleeping in the back seat, so she didn't see where they were going, but she gradually sensed that the car was making too many turns to be going to the Flores family's house. She immediately opened her eyes and saw that they were on the wrong road. However, she was a strong woman, so she stayed calm and confident. Hey, are you sure that we're on the right road? She asked, not sounding nervous at all. The taxi driver jumped slightly. He hadn't seen her open her eyes. Um, there was too much traffic on the freeway, so I'm taking this shortcut, he said. Ariana sneered. She knew he was lying. Really? I think you're taking the wrong road on purpose. The taxi driver stiffened and began to sweat. Before he could say anything else, Ariana continued. There is a road coming up that leads back to the freeway, and you should get back on it. She gave the taxi driver a chance to change his mind before she would punish him. The taxi driver hesitated for a while, then realized he was acting foolish. If he really hurt her, he could be put in jail. You're right. I'm sorry for this terrible mistake, and we'll be back on the main road soon, the taxi driver said. Great, Ariana replied with a single nod. Since the taxi driver changed his mind, she was willing to forget about his temporary detour. The driver abandoned his evil idea and went back to the freeway as he had promised. Ariana paid him when they arrived at the Flores family's house. The driver felt relieved that he hadn't done anything to her when he saw her walking into the house. He knew who the house belonged to, so he knew that she must be a member of the Flores family, or at least had a relationship with them. If he really had hurt her, he would be severely punished. The taxi driver was terrified and drove his car away at once. Lately, Rita had been staying home all day long, and she often got very bored. Since Ariana came over today, she asked her if she wanted to go out and do something fun together after lunch. She felt safe in Ariana's company, and Master Flores didn't have to worry about her. While they were out, they went to buy maternity clothes at the mall. Although the Flores family had gotten Rita lots of clothes already, she still enjoyed going shopping herself. Although her belly hadn't grown much yet, and it was a little early to buy maternity clothes, they still shopped for fun. While they were browsing through clothes at a maternity store together, a middle-aged woman kept glancing at Rita, curiously. There was a girl who looked to be about 13 years old with her. Ariana noticed their behavior, but she said nothing. After a few minutes, the middle-aged woman suddenly approached them and said, Rita, is that you? Rita was surprised and turned to look at the woman. Her jaw dropped open. Janice Doppelman? She said in unbelief. Oh, it's really you, Janice exclaimed. You look so young. It's unbelievable. They were the same age, but Rita looked much younger than her, which made Janice a little jealous. Ariana noticed the jealousy in her eyes and frowned. Rita smiled, but didn't know what to say, because it was true that she looked much younger than Janice. She changed the subject. Do you live in Los Angeles now? Yes, I do, Janice said. Then her sight fell on Ariana, and she couldn't help but notice how beautiful she was. Is this your daughter? she asked. 
Janice was Rita's roommate in college, and they were good friends back then. Eventually, however, Janice grew jealous of Rita. Rita had a very handsome and smart boyfriend, and Janice even tried to steal him away from her, but failed. Afterward, Rita's boyfriend was in a terrible accident, and she quit school. As her good friend, Janice was one of the few people that Rita told she was pregnant. It was a scandal back then, so Janice deliberately spread the news throughout their school and ruined Rita's reputation. Rita didn't know that Janice had started those rumors, because many people were doing that back then. Besides, she also thought it was shameful at the time, so she didn't blame those who gossiped about her. Either way, she had already made the decision to quit school when her child was born. She didn't realize it, but Janice purposely asked about her daughter right now in order to humiliate her again. Yes, this is my daughter, Ariana, Rita replied. She didn't realize what Janice was doing because she never realized that she wasn't her true friend. Rita then introduced her to Ariana. Ariana, this is my roommate from college, Janice Doppelman. Nice to meet you, Miss Doppelman, Ariana politely greeted her. Nice to meet you too. How old are you? Janice asked, pretending to be kind. 19, Ariana said. Janice sighed and said to Rita, It's been 19 years since we saw each other last. I almost couldn't recognize you earlier. It's too bad you got pregnant during our first year at college, or we could have made more good memories. You were an excellent student, but unfortunately, you had to quit school. Janice observed Rita's expression carefully as she said that, hoping to see the embarrassment on her face. However, she was disappointed because Rita had already gotten over it. Well, what a twist of fate, Rita said. She didn't regret what had happened at all. If she had an abortion that year, stayed in college, and found a good job after graduation, her life wouldn't have been so hard 19 years ago. It wasn't as common for women to graduate college in those days, and Rita was very smart. However, if she had an abortion, she wouldn't have such an outstanding daughter, and she wouldn't have met Eve again. She didn't care about Eve's family background, she just cared that he was the love of her life. Janice thought that Rita must be living a poor life now because of what she said. Yes, what a twist of fate indeed. Oh, how's your life now, she asked. It's not bad. How about yours, Rita said. Janice didn't think that Rita had a good life, so she figured that she was pretending. Janice was rich and covered head to toe in designer brands, but she couldn't recognize the brands that Rita was wearing. I'm good too, Janice replied and continued. Oh, are you free now? We may not run into each other again for a long time. Why don't we find a good place to chat for a while? She had no intention of rekindling her friendship with Rita, but she wanted to show off her good life in front of her. Sure, Rita agreed, because she had some free time. Although Ariana felt like something was off, she didn't stop her, because she knew Janice couldn't take advantage of Rita with her there. Janice deliberately chose a high-end cafe for them to go to, and she observed Rita's face when they walked inside. However, she was disappointed again, because both Rita and Ariana looked at ease. It seemed like it was normal for them to go to such a fancy place. Janice was disappointed, but she still believed that they were pretending. I come here all the time, Janice said. They have the best coffee and amazing desserts and drinks. I heard that their confectioner was hired from France, she added. She was acting kind, but Ariana easily saw through her. Really? Rita chimed in. How nice. After they were seated, a waitress walked over with the menu. Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee, please, Janice said. She didn't bother to read the menu. It was obvious that she was very familiar with it. A cup of milk, please, Rita said. Because she was pregnant, she couldn't drink coffee. Why don't you try the coffee? It's made from the highest quality ingredients, Janice said once again trying to embarrass Rita. Coffee was much more expensive than milk, after all. I'm pregnant, so I can't drink coffee, Rita said with a glowing smile. What? Janice was surprised, then quickly recovered. Oh, fine, you should drink milk, she said. Order some cakes if you want. I'm not too hungry, so a cup of milk is enough, Rita said. Great. Janice didn't insist, then turned to Ariana and said, You can order whatever you want, my treat. She acted like she was being very generous, so she could show off her money. The truth was, however, that an afternoon tea didn't cost much. I'll have St. Helena coffee, thanks, Ariana said. Janice was surprised, because she thought that she would order a glass of juice. In her eyes, she was only a young girl. 
Janice's daughter ordered juice and several plates of cake. After that, the waitress left and they continued to chat with each other. Rita, why do you suddenly want a second child? It can be dangerous to have a child at your age, Janice asked. Well, to be honest, it was an accident, Rita said. But Ariana is going away to college soon. I'll feel a little lonely without a child to look after. I understand. Did Ariana just take the SAT? What was her total score? Janice asked. Before Rita could answer, Ariana said, It wasn't bad. It's enough for me to get into a good university. Janice couldn't help but once again feel jealous of Rita for having an outstanding daughter. Her own daughter was terrible at studying, although she was only in 8th grade. Wow, congratulations, Janice said. I don't want to talk much about my daughter's studies. I'm afraid she won't ever make it to college. But it's not a problem. We have enough money to support her. She was just showing off her family's wealth. Rita smiled politely, although she strongly disagreed with Janice. She believed that no matter how rich parents were, children still needed to learn how to support themselves. Janice felt uncomfortable that Rita didn't seem jealous at all. She started to think that she might really be living a good life too. However, she refused to believe it. After all, she wasn't wearing any designer brand or luxurious jewelry, and that was how Janice measured wealth. The truth was, however, because of her pregnancy, Rita dressed as comfortably as possible. Plus, she didn't wear jewelry because it was heavy and unnecessary. So, Rita, what do you do now? Janice asked, fishing for more information about her family. I do nothing now, because I'm pregnant, and I stay at home all day, Rita said, which was the truth. How about your husband? What does he do? Janice asked again. My husband is a businessman, Rita said simply. Janice raised her eyebrows. If Rita's husband was a businessman, her family could be rich too. Her breathing became heavier as she thought of that. Oh, how's your family's business doing nowadays? She asked through gritted teeth. She was hoping to hear some bad news. I don't know much about it, honestly. I'm satisfied with my life now, Rita replied. She didn't want to reveal her relationship with the Flores family. Janice thought that it must be a small business, since Rita was unwilling to tell her details. As long as she lived a worse life than her, she felt happy. Does your husband treat Ariana well? Janice asked. She figured that Rita's husband must be Ariana's stepfather, and some stepparents didn't treat their stepchildren very well. Ariana realized why she asked that, so she said, Very well, in fact. However, a woman's voice interrupted her. Mrs. Flores! A rich lady greeted Rita, and she came over with her two friends. They had been looking for a vacant table and noticed Rita, so they walked over to greet her. "'Nice to see you, Mrs. Flores,' the lady said. "'Nice to see you too, Mrs. Foss, Mrs. Axby, and Mrs. Yates,' Rita said, standing up at once and smiling at them. "'There's no need for you to stand, Mrs. Flores. We all know that you're pregnant,' Mrs. Foss said and helped Rita sit back down. Mrs. Foss had a good relationship with Rita, so it wasn't a secret to her that Rita was carrying her second baby. Janice didn't know Mrs. Foss, but she recognized Mrs. Zaxby, who was a very wealthy lady. However, Mrs. Zaxby didn't know her, so Janice didn't dare to greet her. Janice's family was rich, with over $100 million in assets, but it was nothing compared to a truly wealthy family. Even though Janice was arrogant, she wasn't dumb. To her astonishment, Mrs. Zaxby was very polite towards Rita, which meant that Rita might be in the same circle as them. Janice couldn't believe it, because Rita would be in a much higher social class than her if that was the case. Oh, hi Ariana, Mrs. Foss said with a smile. Nice to see you, Mrs. Foss, Ariana said, standing up politely to shake her hand. I heard that Ariana had the highest SAT in the country this year. Congratulations, Mrs. Foss said brightly. Janice's jaw dropped open. Ariana only told her that her score was good enough that she could get into a good university, but she had the highest score in the country? What Ariana said wasn't a lie, because she could indeed get into a good university with her score. She was just being modest. Miss Young is the most outstanding young girl I've ever seen before. I wish my son was as diligent and smart as you are, Mrs. Zaxby said. Mrs. Flores, we're all envious of you. Rita smiled. Thanks, I'm flattered. Mrs. Yates noticed that Rita was here with her friend, so she said, All right, we shouldn't be bothering Mrs. Flores any longer. We should all get together sometime soon, however. Right, Mrs. Flores, see you, Mrs. Foss said. See you around, Rita also added. 
The ladies excused themselves at once. When they were gone, Janice was still in shock. Janice's daughter, however, stared at Ariana curiously. You got the highest SAT score in the country? She asked. Yeah, Ariana nodded. Janice's daughter was a nice girl, so she didn't mind being friendly to her. Even though Janice was very unkind towards Rita, Ariana wouldn't be mad at her daughter because of it. Wow, you're awesome. You're better than my older cousin. He only got a total score of 1,300 points, Janice's daughter said, then pouted. I don't like studying. She was very blunt, in a funny way. Ariana was amused by her expression, but she understood that not everyone liked studying. Nevertheless, it was important to work hard in school for one to be successful. At this time, Janice suddenly said in an acidic tone, Rita, since you are a friend of so many wealthy ladies, you must have married into a very wealthy family as well. Rita frowned. She finally started to realize that her old roommate wasn't a true friend after all. She curbed her anger, however, and simply replied, Yes, I did. Good for you for finding a rich man who doesn't care about your history and the child you had with another man, Janice said. She didn't hide her bitterness towards Rita anymore. Rita was annoyed by her tone, but remained silent. Janice continued, Oh, is this your husband's second marriage? Does he have any other kids? Will your daughter even get any of his wealth? She figured that no man would be willing to marry a single mother for his first marriage. Janice's husband had been married once before, and Janice married him for his money. In addition, her husband didn't have other kids, so her daughter could inherit his legacy. However, she still felt jealous of Rita because it turned out that she lived a better life than her. Enough! Ariana lost her patience and glared coldly at Janice. Miss Doppelman, I think there is a misunderstanding. My mother has indeed married into a wealthy family, but her husband has never married before, nor has he had any other kids. Besides, I can make money myself, and I don't need to inherit his wealth. Janice was startled that Ariana snapped at her. Her cold glare also made her nervous. She was surprised when she heard that it was Rita's husband's first marriage, and that her husband didn't have other kids. However, she didn't believe what Ariana said about not caring about inheriting his wealth. Although, since Ariana had done so well on the SAT, maybe she figured she could get a high-paying job in the future. Ariana knew what Janice was thinking when she saw her reaction. She continued, My mother and my father love each other deeply, and it's true that my father is far richer than my mother, but my mother owns two beauty salons on her own. They are worth over $50 million, and I also have over $5 billion in wealth. My mother and I are both rich on our own. Janice rounded her eyes in shock. She couldn't believe that Rita owned two beauty salons with over $50 million in assets, and Ariana also had over $5 billion in wealth. Wow, $5 billion? Janice's daughter said, sounding odd. She thought that Ariana was the coolest person she had ever met. By the way, my mother married my biological father, and he treats me very well, Ariana added. That was another piece of shocking news to Janice. If Rita married Ariana's biological father, that meant that she married her boyfriend from college. However, she remembered that he had died in a car accident. Obviously, there were many things that she didn't know about that happened after Rita quit school.